my topic for this 11th International Conference on Sport and Society is are we protecting high performance athletes welfare and mental well-being and I am a professor Elizabeth Toomey School of Law University of Canterbury Christchurch New Zealand this paper describes my ongoing research that addresses current issues relating to the welfare of high-performance athletes, coaches and staff. The failure of cultural and leadership issues across a range of high-profile sports has attracted significant media attention in the last few years and has resulted in a number of independent reviews of a number of sporting codes. These include Cycling New Zealand, Hockey New Zealand, Women's Cricket, Rowing New Zealand, Women's Football, Netball New Zealand, and Swimming New Zealand. The reviews make sobering reading. Bullying, power imbalance between coach and athlete, inappropriate personal relationships, discrimination and harassment, dysfunctional cultures, intoxication, suboptimal leadership, and a significant lack of accountability. A number of statutes underline the importance of resolving these issues, two of which are fundamental in New Zealand's legislative structure. And these are the New Zealand Bill of Rights Act 1990 and the Health and Safety at Work Act 2015. So far in my research, I've identified two particular themes. First, category A, Bullying, dysfunctional, drinking culture, inappropriate personal relationships, power imbalance, and lack of accountability. And second, which I've labelled category B, a negative environment and a loss of confidence. I'm using three reviews in this short presentation. The first, Cycling New Zealand, which is category A. Bullying, dysfunctional, drinking culture, inappropriate personal relationships, power imbalance, and lack of accountability. The focus of the review was in the lead up to the Rio Olympics in 2016, and there was an incident in Bordeaux where the team was training. The coach and a female athlete had a very drunken night in town, and that had massive ripple effects on the team. The team closed ranks, there was pressure on the athlete to give false evidence and to play the party line. There was clearly an inappropriate personal relationship, lack of accountability, very much an old boys club culture. And that with many other factors the reviewers found led to the inevitable which was a poor performance at the Rio Olympics. The second review, the Football Ferns, also category A. The review focused on the coach, Mr. Haraf. First, bullying and harassment. He breached the New Zealand Football Code of Conduct, failed to respect the rights, dignity and worth of some of the players was not always fair and considerate in his dealings with some players. He offended, humiliated and intimidated players, and that was a breach of New Zealand football's human rights policy on harassment. Many players remained distressed and humiliated by what had occurred, and 12 players said they would not play for the Ferns if Mr Haraf remained as coach. And that, of course, is a very brave stance. And under dysfunctional, the staff raised issues that were ignored and downplayed. There was no diversity and inclusion policy for the staff. No women in the senior management team. Only 21% of total staff were female. There was a perception of an old boys club, again, and a tolerance of inappropriate behaviour in parts of the organisation. And many staff spoke of a lack of trust and engagement. And finally, the Silver Ferns, which is in category B, and that is a very negative environment, as the reviewers found. There was a Commonwealth Games horror, 
The team finished outside the medals for the first time at a major tournament in netball history. The players' confidence had fractured and the coach's approach had been inappropriate. She had left it to the players themselves to develop game plans and problem solving and that simply did not work for a green and inexperienced team. That is a glimpse of my research. And maybe the focus of the research is best described in what is the difference between welfare, for example, bullying and harassment, and demanding high performance. And this balance has often been described as somewhat impossible to perfectly resolve. So I end this short presentation with a quotation from Baroness Tani Gray Thompson in her Duty of Care in Sport report in April 2017. And she says, it is clear that the drive for success and desire to win should not be at the cost of the individuals involved. Allegations about the past need to be thoroughly investigated, but the focus must also remain on those in the current system to ensure that they are protected and free from harm, bullying, harassment and discrimination. Although there are processes and safeguards in place the right to culture, and I've emphasised that phrase, is still required to ensure they work. Sport cannot think of itself as special or different and able to behave outside what are considered acceptable behaviour patterns. And on that note, I end this presentation. Thank you.